Hi guys, a student of mine has asked for help in a uh, percentage error question related to calculus, so I thought I'd uh, make a video about it so everyone can have a look. So the question's asking us to use derivatives to calculate the approximate percentage error in the volume of a sphere of radius 4 centimetres, corresponding to an error of 1% in its radius. So what it's asking us to do, that we're asked to find the percentage error in the volume. So the way we denote this is the percentage error in the volume is going to be denoted by delta V over V. And we're looking, that's what we're looking for. And we've been given the percentage error in the radius. So that's going to be uh, delta R over R. And that's equal to 1%. Cool. So what we're going to be using here is we're going to be using the incremental change um, approximation. And what that says is for small changes in the radius, or when we generalize it, it'll be for small changes in the independent variable, or x. Um, in this case, delta v over delta r can be approximated by... dv over dr at a particular point. So what we can then do is we know we can say that delta v can be approximated by dv over dr times by the incremental change in radius. Cool. So what we've been given is we need to we know that the volume of a sphere, well hopefully you know this, is equal to four over three pi r cubed. And the derivative of volume with respect to radius or dv dr is equal to 4 pi r squared. Great. So, what we have to do is I'm going to substitute this function into our approximation formula. So, we're going to have delta v is equal to dv dr, which is 4 pi r squared times times by delta r. So, we're getting close to what we need to solve this. So what we have is we have delta v. Now we're looking for delta v over v. Now the way we can get this is we can divide both sides of our equation by v. So we can, I'll change the color so you can see it. We can go this divided by v is equal to this all divided by v. So what you can see is that it's not going to change the outcome of our equality. So from here, we can keep this as delta v over v, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 4 pi r squared times by delta r. Now instead of writing v on the bottom here, we're going to write what the volume is actually equal to in terms of radius. So that's going to be divided by this. So that's going to be divided by 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Now you can see when we write it like this that we can do quite a few cancellations. The pi's will cancel out. Both r's on the top will cancel out with two of the r's on the bottom. And what we'll be left with is 4 divided by 4 over 3 r times by this delta r value. So go back to blue. So we'll take this up here. We're going to have delta v 
over v is going to be equal to 4 times this divided by 4r over 3. So we've got 4 times delta r divided by 4r over 3. Good. So because we can't divide by fractions, this is a li little bit of um, you know, elementary maths. We have to times by its reciprocal. So we're going to have 4 times delta R times by 3 over 4R. And what's going to happen here is 4 times by something over 4 is going to cancel out the 4s. So what we're left with is we're left with delta V over V is equal to 3 times delta R over R. Now, we know what delta R over R is. They give it to us in the question. So what we can then do is we can go straight in and say, well, Therefore, delta V over V, or the percentage error in the volume, is going to be equal to 3 times 0.01, which is equal to 3% error. So, you can see that that is... It's quite a complex sort of method, but when you're talking about percentage change, the method never changes. That's really bad English, but what we will always do is we'll start with our approximation. We will substitute in the derivative values that we know, and then what we will do is we'll make the left-hand side equal to the percentage change value that we're looking for, and then make sure that whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. We then will probably substitute in for volume, and that's what we did here. And then once we've substituted for volume here, we spend quite a lot of time actually doing some algebra, trying not to make mistakes. And once we get, once we've cancelled out all that we need to cancel out and rearranged, we're going to have the percentage change in volume as a function of the percentage change in radius, or in the general case, the percentage change in y as a function of the percentage change in x. And once you've got that, then it's simply you substitute in the value that you know, and that will give you the other value. So hopefully that helped. Um, this is quite a complicated topic, so I'll make a few extra videos on this, but I'll hopefully see you again next time.